Hi guys, today I'm doing another video on Amazon Web Service, and I think Amazon Web Service is a great tool to use if you need to spin up a server really quickly within a few minutes with no purchasing of an infrastructure highly cost effective and in addition to that there is a community of shared Amazon machine images that means you could download a machine image or an OS pre-configured with the server running on it from the vendor so Nagios for example puts out their Nagios monitoring server out in the Amazon machine image shared community so that means I'm going to show you how to log into your Amazon console and create an instance using a server pre-configured by Nagios tech team so what's better than that right you actually get the company to develop, set up your server and it just takes less than 20 minutes you could have your server up and running and you can connect and start connecting to your clients so just keep watching and I'll show you how to create the instance and add machines into your instance all in Amazon Web Services. The first thing we do is going to go to the Amazon Web Services site, aws.amazon.com, and we'll log into the console. If you're new to this, it actually has a free tier, so you can start doing this completely for free if you build everything on your free tier. And you should, I'll show you as you would go along that uh, where to click for the free tier. But you're going to go and see that all the services they offer. They offer a number of different services here, which is great. I believe it's over 100 different services. But I want to specifically focus on the compute, right? So here's the compute console, the EC2, it's Elastic Compute 2. And you notice there's a few other compute services. Uh, they also offer containers. I'm doing uh, just an instance or a virtual server an instance in their example. I'm going to create an instance. Um, if you look on the very top right, they have um, the region. So you're going to select the region closest to you. It should default to the region closest to you um, based on where you logged in from. Sometimes you might want to do this closer to your end users or customers or wherever your services are. They're going to be using this server. So we're going to go ahead and launch an instance. So we click on instance, new instance. And the first thing it's going to ask is for an Amazon machine image. So this could be a pre-built operating system that may be already configured for a service. In this case, we're going to go ahead and search for Nagios because we're going to go ahead and install a completely built and configured Nagios server that you just download um, an Amazon machine image of. So you could search for Nagios or we could search for their ID their technical ID, and I'll put these in the notes too, the 766915741798. That's a very specific number that will bring you um, Amazon machine images specific from the Nagios Corporation, the Nagios company. So they're already pre-configured by the vendor. So there's a number of different uh, vendors here, a number of different operating systems, and it's really great that they have this um, community of pre-built images. So we're going to have select Amazon monitoring service. After that, it's going to choose uh, what kind of computing service. So the, really, this is the processing power, the amount of memory, um, how many cores generally um, that your instance or your virtual machine is going to have in this cloud environment. So you're going to, how powerful do you want it to be essentially? Um, so I chose medium of the M2 processor type. And if you go ahead and hover over it, it'll give you a kind of a, a little summary of what the processor might be used for and kind of like what um, what services it might offer. So it kind of gives you an idea of what you should be able to run on there. So it kind of gives you a good idea of like the processor, the memory, maybe the networking speed. After that, we're gonna choose some general configurations of networking for our instance. Um, we're going to only create one instance of it. You can launch multiple. And we're going to choose a subnet. You can actually do some kind of interesting uh, virtual private network type stuff for virtual private clouds. Um, you need to choose a subnet. So this is, again, more specific to the networking environment and Amazon Web Services. I will go ahead and select the default if you're new to this. Don't change anything. If um, you created a private network or a private cloud, a virtual private cloud in Amazon, you can go ahead and change it here. But... If you're new to this, just leave it all the default, and we're going to go ahead and check out the storage. Now, for storage, uh, Amazon has a few different options. If you're not sure, leave it to the default. Um, when you select your Amazon machine image, it's going to um, go ahead and pre-configure this. So you just leave it here. And notice for the free tier, you can use up to 30 gig of um, solid-state drives, so flash drives, flash storage, for free. 
and then we add a tag. This is really good for people who have a large number of instances. You go ahead and kind of um, keep track and label them here. So I'm going to just name it my Nagios XI server, so that's way it's easy to find. And then if you have many Nagios XI servers, because you could have a cluster of them collecting information, which is great. If you have a very large environment, you could have a number of them in different data centers. Now we're going to go ahead and select um, our firewall settings. And this firewall setting is not on the OS itself, but actually in the Amazon Cloud environment. So the Amazon Web Services offer um, this nice, really graphical user interface to open up ports to your instance. So Nagio server is mainly a web base. So we have to make sure port 80 is open. And then if you want to go ahead and SSH in, which I would recommend, um, you know, select port 22 SSH. Now you will get a warning here with the 0.0.0, .0 and then slash uh, colon colon slash zero. So that's for IPv4 and IPv6, and that's just saying every single IP address in the world can try to connect to these ports. Now, um, you will get a warning here saying that this is not recommended because then you might get um, some brute force attacks done on SSH. So just keep aware that that's a security risk. Make sure um, you don't give out your certificates, and I'll show you where the certificates are here. So then we're going to go and look at the summary of... Um, our instance that we're about to launch. So we can go ahead and look at all the network settings, our Amazon machine image, seeing that's from Nagios XI infrastructure monitor, which ports we have open, the sources that are able to connect, and again, all IP addresses in the world are stored, and then our tag. Now, once we're done, it's going to prompt us for a key. So there is no password, root password, or EC2 user password. Um, you're going to have to use certificates, and of course, be sure to keep track of the certificate. If lost, you cannot retrieve the certificate again, so once you download it, make sure you save it to a secure location. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new certificate called Nagio Server, and then I'm going to use the certificate to use, um, SSH in. And the user for this instance, and it does vary depending on the Amazon machine image that you are um, using, the user will change for the certificates. So in this case, it's EC2 hyphen user. Once we click launch, it's going to go ahead and start creating our instance in the cloud. It will take a little while to configure, so I'd say about 15 minutes. So go ahead and take a break and come back in a few minutes. And you can go ahead and if you go back to your Amazon call, so you can see your instance is pending, the state is pending, and then it's still initializing. So status check is initializing. So we're going to go ahead and give it a few more minutes. But if you look here, there's actually a lot of information about the networking, the public IP address, DNS, public DNS, private DNS, and then the instance type. So go ahead and take a look at all this, especially if you're new to Amazon Web Services. It's really good to get acquainted to the interface. It's very user friendly. So go ahead and once it's done, we're going to be all ready to start out with our Nagios XI install. It's really the easiest thing to do this. So I highly recommend it if you're new to server monitoring and you want to learn a little bit more about Nagios XI. This just takes a few minutes to set up and you go ahead and start configuring it. So just keep watching. I'll show you how to go ahead and configure a client as well to connect to your Nagios XI. The client does not have to be in Amazon Web Services to be monitored. Um, so I'm doing one of a monitoring instance in Amazon Web Services, but again, it does not have to be that. It could be a machine in your data center, in your environment as well. So if you gave a few minutes, you should be able to go to the IP address slash Nagios XI. If you look up there in the address bar, it's just going to prompt you with a few questions and you're going to start the install. Make sure you keep track of that password. Take a note of the username, Nagios Admin. Be sure to save that password somewhere. Select your time zone. And that's all there is to it. So, so easy. And then we're going to be able to get started using um, their automatic configuration tool. It's probably one of the best things about Nagios XI is how easy it is to start monitoring um, devices, network clients, routers, servers, switches, Windows, Linux. You know, you name it, you can start monitoring. There is a wizard out there that will let you start monitoring um, those services right away. Okay, so now we got note of all our information and we're going to go ahead and click install. 
and that's really there all is to it. So, so easy. So we're going to go ahead and log in and take a look at our interface. So you agree to this license. It's a 60 day license. So you can free, use this for free up to 60 days. Uh, this product is actually pretty well priced. So, I mean, if you're new to this, it's actually, if your company can afford it, I would highly recommend buying this and it's actually not expensive at all. So you can go ahead and take a look at the Nagios.com website for more pricing. But I've been using this product for so many years that um, we have, I, everywhere data center I ever worked in, I always recommend it. So if your company can definitely afford it, I would go ahead and try to make this purchase because server monitoring is just so important. Um, so if you look at this interface, um, very user friendly, very easy to find this monitoring, start monitoring wizards. So I'm going to go ahead and run a configuration wizard and I'm going to go ahead and start monitoring right away. Um, if you notice, there's tons and tons of configuration, like I was saying, configuration wizards here. And they're kind of categorized by, you know, Linux, Windows, networking, and then services. Um, again, he has a little tour here if you want to take the tour if you're new to the interface. So I'm going to go ahead and do a Linux client. Now, if you look on the top, there's a little penguin. That will bring us to our Linux configuration option, Linux server. So you can put in the IP address and then what type of Linux distribution. So I want to put in the IP address of my client. And in this case, my client is also on Amazon Web Service Instance. It's running. So if I go back to my Amazon console and I click on it, if you notice down there, it has a public IP address. Um, and this is automatically assigned. If you want to keep it static, you go ahead and Amazon console and create an elastic IP. And that will keep it a static. Uh, this IP address is not guaranteed. So just if you're doing a client on here, just be aware of that. Same thing with the server. You want to make sure you give it an elastic IP. And that will give it a permanent IP address, an IPv4 IP address. So once we have a copy of that, we're going to go into our client configuration wizard where he's going to paste in our IP address then you can select which distribution of Linux I'm going to go ahead and select other and that's really it I mean it's so so easy to do this make sure you check your firewall settings you install your agent and now you're able to uh, go ahead and configure which services you want to monitor so I'm just going to leave it at the default but if you want to monitor like web services or database or a file server, you can go ahead and add it here. Then it's how often you want to check the service. How often do you want to check it, how many users are on the system or how often. Uh, this does create a network load. It might put a little load on the server as well. So you don't want to monitor every minute or so, every few minutes or every five minutes is sufficient in most cases. Then uh, Nagus XI, which is one of the best features I feel, is the notification. How often do you want to be notified when a service is down? Because I always want to know what's going on with my service, especially if there's an issue. So you go ahead and configure your, uh, how often you're notified. You could put it in uh, a group. So depending how many machines you're monitoring, it might be beneficial to actually group them together. So if you like a cluster of web services or a cluster of file servers, you might want to just group them together so you can monitor how the cluster is doing. Once you do that, the NR NRPE monitoring wizard will go ahead and complete and we just want to make sure now you go to the client and um, we're going to go ahead and SSH in and make sure we have our agent running. It's really just one more step until then it'll say pending it might say unable to connect and we're also going to want to make sure we check our firewall settings so make sure that our Nagio server is able to connect to the correct port on the client it's trying to monitor. So if we go over and now SSH into our client, we're going to be able to uh, configure some of these settings and install the right agent. So I'm going to go ahead and use PuTTY. I'm going to put in the IP address for the server and the agent to go ahead and start um, checking our configurations. And for both of these cases, since they're both in the Amazon Web Services, the user is ec2-user and our certificate just logs us right in. Now it's really easy just to go ahead and use wget to download our uh, NRPE agent, our monitoring agent. I'm going to download to slash temp 
And I'll go ahead and have the path in the notes here. So you go ahead and copy and paste it from the notes. We're going to extract it, uncompress it, and extract it. And then we're going to run the full install. Now the full install is really, really simple. It's fully um, configured to run seamlessly. I never really had a problem with this install. So go ahead and just do dot slash current work directory and then uh, full install. This does have to have run with admin rights or supervisor or root privileges. So sudo and then dot slash full install. And it will go ahead and install the packages it needs as well as configure the firewall settings and run any services it needs. And once it's done, it will ask you to provide the IP address for your Nagios server so it knows who's allowed to connect to this port. So only the IP address, the source IP address from the Nagios server is allowed to collect information from this agent. So there's also a configuration file as well, the nrpe.config file. So it says allow from, this is where we put in our Nagios server IP address. Um, if this changes, you always configure the file, the nrpe.conf agent, and that's really it. So now we can go back to our Nagia server and start, just wait a few minutes for the client information to update to the server. So now if we look at our services, it will say critical, it might say it's down. So just wait a few minutes after your agent is running um, on your client and you want to make sure that the configuration is done so the service is running. It should work. I never really had much of a problem with that full install. But you go and double check by doing a um, check config command. And that will show you the um, NRPE agent is running under xinitd.dconf file. So once that's done, you should be able to see that it's updating to our server slowly. Um, of course, if you're having problems, make sure you check your system firewall and that your firewall settings are allowing the Nagios server to connect. And then once it's done, you should notice that it lights up as green and the services are now up and running. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave below. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and I will subscribe to get updates. Bye. See you guys next time.